What's up everyone, welcome back. I'm Jen Woodhouse and I cannot even express to you how excited I am to share our latest project. Now, this project was never part of the plan, but then quarantine happened and we found ourselves spending a lot more time at home, like most people, which can be dangerous because then I start looking around and I find all sorts of projects. And let me tell you, my husband loves that. We actually decided to hire a professional mason to do most of this project, rather than attempt to do it ourselves. I've never laid brick before in my life and this was too big of a project that I just didn't feel comfortable and I definitely couldn't afford to mess up. So we got four different quotes from contractors which range from $8,000 all the way up to $18,000. So I highly recommend that you get a few quotes so that you can make a more informed decision. We ended up hiring a man named Tony who's been a mason all his life and the experience and skill that he brought to this project was absolutely essential. The first thing we had to do was prep the site. We dug up the boxwood bushes, and by we, I mean Adam and our seven-year-old son, Liam. I tried to salvage the bushes so that we could relocate them elsewhere on the property, but sadly, they didn't survive. Um, you'll also want to check your local codes before you tackle a project like this. Our city doesn't require a permit, and we also knew that there were no utility lines running underground because I'd had the land surveyed when we built my workshop. So we are good to go on that. Adam and Liam spent a couple afternoons digging the hole for the footing. The hole followed the curve of the patio and was 18 inches deep, which got us below the frost line and 32 inches wide. The place where the firebox would be was a little bigger at about 44 inches from front to back. Once the hole was dug, it was time to pour the concrete for the footing. We used 54 80 pound bags of concrete mix and I guess we could have rented a mixer, but we just, didn't. We looked into hiring a professional concrete truck, but the minimum order was five cubic yards and our footing was only about one and a half cubic yards. So not worth their time and effort and we are on our own. For a footing this size and for the weight that it would carry, the slab needs to be at least eight inches thick. Since we had a couple of tiny helpers, some of our concrete mix was a bit wet, but it actually worked out well for us because the extra water allowed for a longer curing time. And since we were hand mixing the concrete in a wheelbarrow, we needed the extra time so we didn't get ahead of ourselves. It turned out to be just fine, as told by our mason. Our local code doesn't require any steel reinforcements in a footing this size, but we went ahead and laid in some steel mesh because I figured it's cheap and you can't put it in after. I'd rather have it not need it than need it not have it. After the footing cured, Tony laid 8 inch concrete block on top as the foundation for the firebox. The firebox is the most important part of this project. If not done correctly, the fireplace may not function properly. The smoke should draw up through the chimney and not back out the front opening, because a face full of smoke is no fun. Tony laid the fire brick on top of the concrete block and then built up the side walls. He angled the side walls of the firebox slightly so that it's wider at the front than at the back. He also angled the back of the firebox so that it slanted forward and used block and brick to temporarily hold those fire bricks in place as the mortar set. He spread sand on the bottom of the firebox so that if any mortar fell, it would be easy to clean up and sweep out. Super smart. Tony also built what's called a smoke shelf. It's open here at the back so that if you get a downdraft, the smoke won't come back at you but will fall and settle into this smoke shelf. is a little over 10 feet tall. The height also serves a function in the draw. You need it to be a certain height to draw properly. So all of these elements work together and are equally important in ensuring that the fireplace functions as it should. So I was much more comfortable leaving these details to a professional. Once the firebox was built, Tony started roughing in the rest of the structure with concrete block and red brick. We used the cheapest red brick available because it would be covered up with a stone veneer. The only brick that would be seen is the fire brick. Tony spread the mortar along the edges of the block and then started stacking the block 
Staggering the seams and checking for level at each run, he'd tap it into place so that it was level and plumb, and then he'd scrape the excess mortar off with a trowel. To lay brick, he spread mortar along the edge of the brick, then used his trowel to make a channel that creates suction for a better seal between each brick. Then he kind of shimmied the brick in place, threw a level on there, and then tapped it until it was level. It was fascinating to watch him work. There was a delicate balance between tapping it enough so that the brick would be level, but not tapping it too hard that the rows underneath were affected. There is definitely an art to masonry. Once the sides were built up around the firebox, it's time to bridge the gap. Adam cut an angle iron to length and then placed it over the firebox. This will provide support for the rest of the chimney until the mortar sets. And it stays there. There's really no need to remove it because once again, None of this will be seen. It'll all be hidden by a stone veneer. For the arched opening, we created a template out of plywood and two by four studs, and then we nailed it into place temporarily. Then, Tony cut the brick to fit and laid it on top of the arch. And then once the mortar set, we removed the wood template. We actually decided that we needed the opening a little lower because you could see the top of the firebox inside. So Tony lowered the template, added another arch row of brick, let the mortar set, and then remove the template. Next, he placed the flue liner above the firebox, filled the space with block and brick, and then continued building up the chimney. I designed the fireplace so that it angles in as it goes up, so Tony used an angle grinder to cut the angle of the chimney to achieve that profile. He'd also score the brick and used a brick hammer when he had to make some quick cuts. Now that the fireplace is roughed in, we moved on to the bench seating. We used four inch lightweight block here. Tony dropped mortar onto the footing, then laid the block and leveled it. He stacked the seat three blocks high and then added the backrest behind it. You're probably thinking, man, this project looks pretty rough. This must be why they call it roughing in. Thank goodness none of this brick and block will be seen. Once we add the stone veneer, this monstrosity will soon become a masterpiece. Trust. While we waited for the stone to arrive, we got rid of some excess dirt, debris, and cutoffs and dumped them into the voids in the bench. Now this does two things. It helps us clean the area and it reinforces and fills the structure. I mean, we have to get rid of it somewhere, so why not here? I dry fit the hearth with red brick. It's easier to curve brick than block. And I wanted the hearth to be wide enough to sit at since that's where I'll likely be, as close to the fire as possible, because I'm always cold. Once the curve of the hearth was decided, Tony laid the bricks in place. And then he filled the inside of the hearth with any remaining block and brick and anything else we could find. The stone has been delivered and it is finally time for the fun and pretty part. We chose a manufactured stone. Natural stone is so much more expensive. And it cost about $6 a square foot. Now our house is a French colonial, so I really wanted an old world look as if this fireplace has been sitting in the French countryside for like a hundred years. I think this stone was the perfect choice. It has this casual European elegance and it's true to the 19th century colonial architectural era. And I love how well the color complements the house. Tony started laying the stone at the opening of the firebox. He spread mortar on the brick, then back buttered the stone and pressed the stone into the brick. He varied the placement, size, and color of the stone to make it look more natural. We also had these corner pieces that wrapped around the corners, and he'd also cut stones here and there to fit. We placed the stone so that it had thick joints for an overgrouted look and together with a little whitewashing haze on some of the stone faces, it just adds to that casually imperfect yet elegant look. Once the stone was on, it was time to grout the joints. We used the same mortar, I chose the lightest color by the way, and we mixed it a little wetter and dropped it into the piping bag. Then you just squeeze the mortar into the joints and overfill it a bit, just like you're icing a cake. Allow the mortar to set before smoothing it out with a wire brush. Tony continued laying the stone until the entire fireplace was covered. Then he moved on to the hearthstones for the bench seating. We used 20 inch square hearthstones for the bench and the hearth. For the very top, Tony built posts out of red brick at each corner and then wrapped those in stone. This supports the 32 inch square, three inch thick capstone. 
The capstone acts as a spark arrester as heat and smoke travel upwards, any embers or sparks are deflected on the stone cap. Now, the moment of truth. Let's see if this thing draws. Sure enough, the fire roared straight up into the chimney and functioned exactly as we'd hoped and as it was designed. So amazing. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this project. And if you have any questions, drop them in the comment section below and I will do my best to answer them. Be sure to subscribe, like, share, all that good stuff and visit jenwoodhouse.com for more details. And I will see you in the next video. I seriously don't know what to do. I feel like I want to do this, but I'm like, door, fireplace. I tried to salvage the bush. Gosh, that's hard to say. Okay.